I chose to focus on the post-impressionist movement for the major art project. It was an art movement that inspired generations of artists to express their creative ideas freely and push the boundaries of color and perspective. Post-impressionists originated in France and lasted from roughly 1886 to 1905. You can tell the post-impressionism painting apart from the vivid colors and thick oil paintings on canvases. The layer of paint added another dimension to the paint that expressed movements and emotions in the colors and subjects. The art of this movement was more expressive and symbolic and sometimes used unrealistic colors to break away from the naturalist movement. Artists tried not to paint exactly what they saw, but what they felt from subjects, as well as use distinct brush strokes and colors that pop out of the canvas and make painting in this style easily recognizable. According to Oxford Online Art, post-impressionalists can be defined as a rejection of the impressionalist concern for the naturalistic depiction of light and color in favor of an emphasis on abstract qualities or symbolic content. It all started with the Grafton Galleries in London when an artist named Roger Fry called his new exp exhibition Post-Impressionalism. The artwork exhibited here contributed to the first collection of Post-Impressionalism paintings that rejected the Impressionalism artwork of the previous time. These artists were driven to be more expressive of emotion and paint with that in mind, not so much trying to be as realistic as possible. Due to the climate of the times, breaking free from cultural norms of the past was popular and many artists started experimenting with new painting techniques. In France, the political and cultural anarchy of the 1880s and 1890s encouraged artists to reject the stylistic norms of the past. Again, artists were compelled to freedom of expression because of the dark past that France and other countries have gone through and were eager to escape artist boundaries and go on experimenting in new styles and forms. Being even more expressive in using symbols to tell a story and give meaning to an artwork are all a key part of the post-impressionalist movement. To name a few of the famous post-impressionalism artists, we have Vincent van Gogh, Henry, R Henry Rousset, Paul Cezanne, Paul Signac and George Stewart, all of whom have a great influence and impact not only on the post-impressionalism art movement, but also on future art to come. Thanks to the contributions from these artists, the post-impressionalist movement has influenced future art in an undeniable way. Unnatural colors became popular to use and expressive Expression became essential to art. Artists didn't have to use the same old styles like naturalism and impressionalism and try to capture their subjects as literally as possible and as realistic as possible. Instead, artists were more comfortable painting what they felt from a subject and trying to convey emotions on the canvas through bold, vivid colors and irregular expressive shapes and lines. This movement inspired modern artists such as Pablo Picasso and Henry Matasse. Today you can see Henry Matasse, Matisse work on art display in the Philadelphia Art Museum and see how he in, was inspired by the post-impressionalist movement to create some of his masterpieces including this one called Lux, Calm, Et, Volt, or Luxury, Calm, and Pleasure. It also inspired other art movement that proceeded in such such as Fauvism, Surrealism, Neo-Impressionalism, and Cubism. The post-impressionalist movement changed the world of art forever and arguably brought new life and meaning to art itself. A great example of post-impressionalist is Vincent van Gogh's Wheat Filled with Crows. This oil on canvas painting was created in July of 1890 and featured an open wheat field winding past dark blue sky and several small black crows. The brush strokes are clearly visible and give texture to the canvas that also add movement and feeling to the scene. You can also visualize the wheat blowing in the wind with how Van Gogh uses many different shades and brush strokes on the field and ground and sky. You can see the colors are very vivid and bright from the deep blues in the sky, browns for the past, and yellows to represent the wheat field. 
A Britannica article on Van Gogh describes the evolution of his painting style as follows. The natural forms in his paintings become less contorted, and in the northern light, he adopted cooler, fresh tonalities. His brushwork became broader and more expressive, and his vision of nature more lyrical. Everything in these pictures seems to be moving and living. Another example of post-impressionism artwork is the Fisherman or Fantastic Scene by Paul Cezanne. He is considered one of the most influential artists in the history of modern painting and has been categorized as a post-impressionist. This painting was created around 1875 and depicts a peaceful scene of people leisurely enjoying the day by the water and captures fishermen next to their boat as well as children laying down on a field beside them. The paint is layered on thickly and the shapes and lines of the people's bodies are somewhat construed. The distinct brush strokes bring out the shapes of the trees, clothing, sky, and clouds, which is all in line with the post-impressionist movement. Without being extremely realistic, you can make out everything that is going on in this painting because of the techniques used by Suzanne to distinguish the different people and the nature in the background. Some characters seem to be smudged and distorted, which symbolizes movement to the scene and adds that key detail of expressionism to the artwork. Art-centric George Rivera had this to say about the fisherman. It is strikingly majestic and extraordinarily calm. It seems that the scene takes place in Suzanne's memory while he turns through the pages of his life. Another example of post-impressionism artwork is The Dream by Henry Rousseau. This stunning painting features a nude woman sitting on a couch in the middle of a jungle surrounded by nature and creatures in a dreamlike fashion. This representation of nature relied more on Rousseau's imagination rather than a reality that is dreamlike seen is what the post-impressionism movement means at its core. The symbolism in this painting from the including the woman stretched out on the sofa in the middle of a jungle and the human-like creature playing an instrument would later go on to influence other styles such as cubitism and surrealism. The colors of this painting are highlighted by the detail and patterns that bring this painting, the dream, to life. According to Oxford Online, Henry Rousset was a self-taught artist and one might surmise that what he most relished was the sensation of stepping from a familiar space in one movement into a fantastic one in the next, and the dream couldn't represent this side of him better. Henry himself described this painting as the woman asleep on the couch is dreaming she has been transported into the forest listening to the sounds from the instrument of the enchanter. I will end with this quote from Vincent Van Gogh. I dream my painting and I paint my dream. That's what the post-impressionist movement was all about.